Good morning, everyone. Here it is, a Saturday morning, and I'm digging right in. We're continuing working on our uh, miniature golf game. This is just setting up the basics of it, and then we'll create some, you know, larger holes and everything else later on. But so far, we've created the ground uh, for the first hole, which is really basic. Added the hole at the end. Um, we put a flag in there, and we've also created the putter. Uh, this morning, what I did was I have angled it on a one degree angle and we're adding the ball and I'm going to enable the physics engine and see if we can't uh, see if we can't start working with the physics on it and get everything working. So um, without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so this is the setup. This is the game. We noticed the flag even has a little bit of animation on it. It distorted my number one on there, which I'm not sure why, but eh, I'll figure that out later. Um, it stretched the graphic or something. Eh, we'll figure that out. But I have the ball here. It's going to, when we turn on the physics, it's going to bounce off the ground here and start rolling downhill because it's a one degree angle. So that's the plan. And we'll see what we can do. Okay, so in um, what I found is searching under Babylon, they have a way of, first of all, you enable the physics on your engine, which I have already done right on the core page. Um, two things. We added a physics imposter to the extra ground uh, so that it automatically has some type of, uh, some type of uh, dynamic to it. Uh, restitution, let's make that about a seven. We don't want to bounce like create our five. We don't want to make it uh, bounce too much on the ground. Um, that's just our base ground that sits below everything else. And then up here, when we created the scene, doo -doo -doo -doo, we have the scene here and we have enable physics. We have the gravity vector set and also the plugin. We're going to use Canon for now. Unless we find a good reason to do with something else, we're going to go with the Canon physics engine, which means what we need to do is for each item, we're going to tell it what type of um, what type of settings to have. There's going to be a mass, restitution, and also friction. Uh, so we're probably, well, eventually we're going to be adding those into the database under those tables for each object you create and see if we can't uh, continue it from there. Okay, um, notice in the playground, when I run this thing, what I did was, this was a sample, first of all, it just shows you that if you drop this item in here, the ball bounces and it goes. You can set the restitution, notice if I make it like a nine, and I bounce it, the ball bounces more, and keeps going, kind of like a Super Bowl. And then the other part was, I added a rotation to the ground just one degree, right there converted my one degree into radians click go and notice it kind of just bounces but it starts to roll off the edge until it finally drops so that's part of the physics engine okay using that same idea here though what we want to do is take this line and i'm going to implement that underneath where we have for now, I'm just starting, we're just starting this out. We'll, we'll put it in the correct place afterwards, but for now, I'm gonna go into the molds, basic molds, and when we create the sphere, now, right now it's gonna do it to any sphere that was in my development environment, but I'm okay with that for the moment. So here, um, after the scaling, we're gonna go and put this line in here. And for the sphere, it's gonna be mold, that's the name of the mold for every mold I create at this point in time. And just by doing that one line, I want to see what the scene does because I, when it loads that, this ball should drop and start rolling that way. Uh, might go through this because I haven't added a physics imposter to the actual ground. So we'll find out if that's the case. If it is, we'll fix that and move on to that next. So let's see what happens when we load it. Uh, the ball is not there. Oh, I think the ball, if we were to look hard enough, 
<laughs> Let's see what happens. Uh, the ball didn't... I don't know where the ball went. <laughs> okay, well, that's a good start. Um, yeah, we need to do something about that. I need to make it more like on an on-click or something that it in, uh, that it drops. Well, no, that isn't going to work so easy. Hmm. So the ball fell through the earth, maybe? Let's see what happens. Reload it one more time. It might be the order. If this wasn't here, the ball fell through. Um, yeah, see, the ball's not there. Okay, we've got something out of place. Um, most likely, this is trying to happen before it even gets a chance to do anything. Um, window dot set timeout function. We're gonna give it three seconds. And then we're going to tell it to add that. And just to see what happens, just to see if that actually does it. it. Might be just a timing issue. But this should put the ball in the scene and then drop it. We're going to find out. Because I think it's dropping eternally down. Okay, one, two, three. Avatar is loading. Let's see, did it load? No, it doesn't know what that item is. Can't pass the whole object into that. Um, what we could do is var mold equals scene get mesh by ID and mold name. Now the mold name will pass. Oops. We'll pass in there, and then we grab the mold, and we apply the physics imposter to it after three seconds. Uh, we can even, just to do it, we're going to spit something to the console. Mold name. Let's see if that does it. It's all about the timing when you're working with the physics engine. If I create it and the ground's not created yet, then what happens is you end up with <laughs> dropping it through the ground. Um, let's see if that does it. And that's when it added it. Added it twice. That's interesting. Hmm. Building mold one and four. What two circles do we have? It saved two spheres. Let's first fix that. I don't want... I only want one in here. We're going to have to do some code fixes on some of that stuff later on, but for now, let's just work with what we have. Uh, building molds. Where building ID equals that. And... We have a sphere there and a sphere there. Fine. We're not going to have two spheres. We don't want the conflict right now. We're going to delete a row. Apply that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Make sure we're only dealing with one so we don't have a conflict of interest on that. Okay. Now, see, applying the physics to that item didn't drop it. Um, okay, so when we're doing the scene, there's there's two parts here that I'm not sure about. Uh, one of them is when we do the scene, uh, I want to see if we can set this scene enable physics, return the scene. We're going to try it here, see what it does. Uh, window set timeout, function this, comma, three seconds, 
X on that and put that there. And let's find out if we can make that work. Okay, we have this, and after three seconds, oh, it does drop the ball. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with doing a set timeout with that, but we may still have an issue with our physics engine being enabled. Um, we need to find out what's actually going on with that. Uh, this part, not an issue. That should still do that. And mass equals one, restitution equals 0.9. We shouldn't have a problem. The scene is called scene, so we didn't change anything on that. Notice we use scene right here. Do, 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 do. Um, Part of the avatar is not that anymore. We don't need that line anymore. That was for something else that I was doing at the time. Okay. Um, let's see here. Huh. Oops, did I? Yeah, so we have that. Well, let's, so I don't think the physics is turned on or is working yet. Let me, um, let's simplify something and test it. That seems like a good plan of attack. Um, right here, we're gonna do something very basic and just see if, see we have physics plugin we have that. Oh wait, if the physics, do we have cannon being enabled? I did see a note about that. To do this, you have to have cannon script enabled, which is, which makes sense. We have the cannon script. I know we already downloaded the latest of the cannon script. I just want to make sure that we're loading it. Because if we aren't loading it, that would explain a lot right now. So let's go back to the core, not forms, but functions. And in here, this is where we actually set the scripts that get loaded from the start, the default ones. Okay, that's looking like a bunch of other stuff. Uh, okay, wait. Did I move them? Oh, here they are. Okay, here's the scripts. Let me slide that down a little bit, give us a little bit more view. And we have the engine and cannon is being loaded right here. So we do have cannon loaded. That shouldn't be the problem there. Okay. Scene. We did that. We did that, we did that, we did that. Enable physics is also a shortcut, which you can do. Um, no problem there. I'm just gonna make sure we didn't load more than one. And I'm gonna get all the things related to Babylon, of course, the engine, which we do not need to check. Enable physics equals one. That isn't even being used. Oh wait, we have it running twice. We have this one here, and that's why I was checking. We have this one here, which we are going to now shut off. Uh, and set gravity, we don't need the scene well, we do need the scene gravity from there because that's actually checking if there was a change in the gravity. Uh, let's turn that off. I think what happened was we were running the line twice and it was killing our properties. So now let's see if we have a working physics engine. Okay, the ball isn't there. <laughs> and it already dropped before I started the scene. Let's find out. Uh, basic avatars, uh, okay. 
Okay, I need to put these in a couple places where we can find them over and over again. Basic molds. Okay, keeping them right where I can see them. The sphere, let's put back in the couple second drop. And let's see if we have this working. Okay, the ball's there, and well, it applied the three second rule, but it did not drop. We still have something wrong with the, maybe it's the gravity setting. Let's double check the gravity setting when it enables it. Um, going back up to here. Scene gravity. Let me do. Uh, yeah, that's the vector for gravity. Let's check this number here. If it's zero, that would explain a lot. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to get this working because this is the part we need to do next. I'm on it. Okay, it's 9.8, and it's a negative because of the direction we're doing this. Uh, that should drop the second we apply the gravity or this force to it. Hmm. Not sure why it didn't. I can't climb up something that high. Do, 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 do. But this end got lowered. I want to run into it and see what happens. Come on. There it goes. Okay, run through the flag. There we go. And up this way. Do, 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 do. So, okay, I can't run through it. Huh. Well. That didn't affect it at all. Okay, we still don't have gravity applying in here like it should. So we're going to take this physics engine here, and under basic molds, I'm going to remark out this for the moment. I think I know why. That would be a good thing, since I'm the one who has to fix it. Seven. Okay. Uh, let's see. We have we have the basics. We have this here. And what happens is, I'm I was doing some other stuff there, and that's all remarked out. So we're not applying that. But when I do complete mold, one of the pieces down here says. Do, 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 do. Let me get to complete mold here. Um, I have something that may be freezing the world matrix. And if that's happening on some object that has physics, it's going to freeze, I believe. So for now, we're going to turn that off and see what it does. That may be the other place where it was affecting this. We're going to find out if that's the truth or not. And we have one, two, three. Let's say. No, it still didn't drop it. <laughs> okay, we're going to the next step, which is to take this right here. We're going to add, um, right after we enable the physics engine, which is right there, I'm going to add a sphere. We're going we're gonna to test this out. Um, bar mold equals this at default side we don't need double default side side orientation we shouldn't need that at all updatable Ooh, that may be our problem let's try true on that segments updatable scene there we go and then we're going to apply same way we did here, 
I'm going to do the whole wait three seconds thing just so we have something to work with there. And okay. Uh, first of all, mold name, we're just going to call this test oops, ball. Test ball, that's going to be there. Um, I'm going to start it. Mold position dot y equals 20 let's get it up in the air so we can see it and then we're going to turn on it's not mold name anymore we didn't need to do that on the other page i'm going to go ahead and drop that here uh, the only thing we need is to take that mold and apply the physics imposter we have one gravity restitution set Oh, you know what? We need to do this not right here. We need to do it after we set the ground. The ground one is right extra ground, and the physics imposter is set on that because I want to test it without the pause next time, too. Okay, let's see what that does. I'm guessing it's going to be closer to where the flag is because I think that's at 000 in this scene. But we're going to find out. Uh, something didn't load. Nothing loaded. Uh, subdivisions. Oh, okay, subdivisions. Um, subdivisions is going to be, let's do 24. and let's see things are loaded there's the ball that we're adding and it drops okay that's a good sign because then it means something about this is not working which means it's a setting that we've applied to that ball that's a good sign but the good news is our test worked it dropped that i'm going to leave that on the page for now because yeah because we're going to so then it means that something down the line here when we do this process um see i had freeze oh let's look for mold freeze matrix again because i may be marking this in one of two places and for all i know i did it in both uh nope i only did it in one let's check freed world matrix by itself because that would have been a good clue of where it could have an issue. Um, no, those are just these two here. Okay. So if I'm not, oh, wait a minute. I did say make it updatable. That was one other thing I saw here that I changed. So let's do that. And I have a feeling that's what it required updatable once it's updatable once we got the physics engine just running once now do we have that one fell this one didn't okay we still have something different between the two so we're going to look at the settings and double check what we're missing here so physics imposter everything looks the same there um, the mold was created updatable true Nothing wrong on that side of things. I think we're okay with the way it created it. It's still a ball. It still has the physics imposter on it. I think we're going to do some tests here. Could have some to do with this test collision section. I'm going to turn that off for a minute. I want to make. I want something to make this fall. And then once I do, we can go from there. The good news is physics engine's on. If that didn't happen, then I would be much more worried than I am right now. Um, so, okay, it has nothing to do with check collisions. That's fine. I'm going to re put that back into place. I know it could be more than one thing's causing it, but I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Um, I don't see anything here that parented. OK, 
can it be parented? That's a good answer to our question. I think the parent wouldn't matter because it just means it's part of a coordinate system. Hmm. Let's try that. Mold parent equals extra ground. Just to set it to something. Oh, that's going to be a really weird shape. Let's not do that. Um, extra ground doesn't have a parent. Um, where is the scene creates a parent, but it isn't there yet. Huh, I'd have to put it someplace where we could try to break it. Um, well, there's another way. Instead of trying to set the parent here, we can unset the other one and see if that makes a difference. That's a possibility. Let's say parent mold parent equals no. Don't think that's going to do it, but it's worth testing. Because it's still about the position where it's at. Oh! And it fell through the ground, which is fine. I didn't set that to equal anything yet. Hmm. That means... Okay, well, that was a learning curve there. Um... In order to make it do something, we have to unparent it. Wow, okay, good to know, good to know. That does make a difference. Um, okay, we're gonna leave that where it is for the moment. Let's keep on learning here. I'm gonna take this and, you know what, for now, I'm gonna remark this out. I'm not gonna delete it yet. We'll clean up this code afterwards. The reason I don't want to delete it yet is I may have something else I need to test on it. So we're going to leave that there. Okay, the next piece is when we bring in basic molds, the next one that we get through here is the actual ground that I'm working with right here. This is a physics. Uh, we need to set the physics imposter on that so that the ball will roll down it. Okay, mold line, let's see, mold terrain, mold dome. I know I'm going to have to set it on all of these different various pieces as an option. Right now we're just going to work with the ones that we are using, which happens to be the... Do, 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 do. We're almost there. Mold video. I think it's after this. Do, well, it better be. <laughs> Candle flame, Ooh, we're getting, we got all kinds of cool ones down here, by the way. Particle sphere, which can have physics, I noticed. That one's kind of an interesting one. Babylon file, this is where we're loading the other piece. When the Babylon file comes through, it is um, resulting meshes for each result mesh. Um, okay, this is where I name them. That's where I set the position. And for now, I'm going to set a physics imposter based on this, which is the mesh, which means right there and right here. Needs something. And the physics imposter that I'm going to do is obviously not the sphere. Uh, we are going to set the mass to zero, uh, which will mean it's not going to drop, not going to move. Otherwise, bunk, it'll drop to the ground. That might be interesting to see, but we're going to leave it that way for now. And instead of sphere imposter, we're going to change that to mesh imposter, which should take the shape of the actual item that we just imported. So let's see what happens there when we open the scene and drop the ball. Yeah, 
Okay, it hit the ground there, and it is starting to roll forward. Do, 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 do. Here it goes. It does have physics. Yay, that's a good sign. The ball is rolling. <laughs> we have to see it go hole in one. Come on. <laughs> you didn't think I was going to pass on that idea. So even one degree is enough that it keeps on rolling. It is picking up a little bit of speed. And let's see what happens when it gets there. And bunk. We're in the hole. Okay, that's our first hole in one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a good sign. That means we now have some type of... Uh, so we have the physics running. We have this taking on shape. Um, just to do it, I'm going to take this item and I want to tilt it two degrees this way and watch it bounce off the side. Just to do it. Just because. Now it should come t bounce and come towards me a little bit. But hey, like I said, it's all part of making it work. Here we go. It's bouncing. We also have it running kind of slow right now. Hmm. I wonder if there's something I can do on that. Okay, it's running along that edge. And it's going downhill. Okay, so that does work. Um, the other part is if I add a friction to it. Friction one. Oops, get it coming in there. I want to see if that, what that does. Uh, let's put it back flat. Okay, and let's reset that. We're learning, we're learning. I know it doesn't have to bounce quite so high. That's our 0.9 on the bounce, which we can fix. But let's see what friction does, if it maybe slows it down, if it stops it before it gets there, or if the gravity of the or the angle seems to make any difference. We're at one degree. Seems to be picking up speed, so I think it's still going to go all the way to the pin. Okay. Okay, so we're able to make a hole in one. That's a good sign. That's all working. Okay, next I'm going to see what I can do about... Uh, <laughs> Okay, and here we go. What's next? Um, in Babylon, one of the things I have... Okay, so I'm going to take this. Uh, now, the thing is, how can we adjust the speed that the ball is rolling? Um, well, that's got to be the mount that I tap it and hit it, but it seems like even gravity even gravity makes it seem like it's falling very slowly. Uh, one gravity, it should be dropping at a certain speed. It should be working faster. I'll, I'll research that later. Let's get the physics going for the rest of this, which means I need to figure out how to hold the club in the hand, and then we can um, then we can strike the ball, which would be kind of cool. Okay, um, rotate zero degrees. I'll put that back flat, and when we drop the ball, save that, and the other part's going to be, I'm going to be standing over here when I start. I want to see if I can't uh, learn to attach the club to his actual hands, 
so that we have some type of, I know I should have just straight get close and then strafe into position. And let's detach the avatar. There's a reason I did this in the designs. We're gonna look and see how close he is here. He needs to move up a little bit. Okay. We'll start right there. How'd I do? I think I'm off a little bit still. Yeah, that, that doesn't work. <laughs> okay. We'll take him there and need to make sure he's facing this way properly. So let's start like that. Set this to his starting position. Then we'll leave him there each time, and then we can check to see how this is doing by rotating and coming out here. Um, I'm not worried about the club because it's going to move as I go. I guess I could back him up a little bit farther. Okay, we'll start with him right there. His current position. Okay. The next part for us is to get the club in his hand and make it where we can actually aim and then take a stroke. So let's see what we're going to do. I don't know how to do it yet. We're going to find out. First thing I want to look at is let's get the guy up here because I kind of need to see the bone structure and see if there's a particular bone that we're going to try to attach his hand to. Loading this on my other screen real quick. Uh, file open. We have, where's Malcolm? Malcolm, and I don't blender, open in blender. Okay. Uh, first things first, we have the guy, and we're going to start with right handed. We'll figure out something later on, but. For now, I'm going to grab the armature, and I learned in front is where we can see all the bones and everything. Um, we need to check uh, left, right. Okay, if we go down the spine, or up the spine, because we start with the hips, spine to spine to... Uh, Left, right shoulder, so right shoulder. And if I move that over a little bit more, right forearm, right hand. And then under the right hand, we have a number of things. We have each one of the actual fingers and everything. What I'm going to aim for is right hand. That's the name of the bone that I actually want to um, see if we can't connect the uh, piece to. Uh, to do that, we're going to need to, first of all, see if we can find the right hand when it loads um, so that we know what we're dealing with. Um, I know I didn't need to save that. So, basic avatars. This is when it loads the avatar. Going in here. Each one of the meshes underneath that are there, and then each one of the bones... I threw the skeletons and then we have skeleton name okay under skeletons this is all of the bones I believe I want to right here we're gonna just find out what is happening um, log that and it's going to be skeleton equals we're going to find out if the, all the bones names here load up and what we actually get. So we're going to put that right there and see what we're dealing with. Whoops. Let's get to this screen. I know I spit gravity on the scene and that other mold stuff. I should have cleared those. We'll clear them because we don't need them on the scene anymore. Um, the ball is there and the ball drops. That's a good sign. Where There's my avatar. It didn't 
take me through oh skeleton equals armature okay that's not um, and the mold name is sphere oh that's sorry that's the wrong one skeleton equals armature armature uh, okay once we have the armature we have to go down through the armature and find the actual hand I have a method to my madness here because uh, we need to make sure the name or the hand itself has a name for us to be able to call it which it should have right hand underneath that particular skeleton we're gonna see what we need to do here um, let's try I actually don't want to lose that screen let's go Attach mesh to bone. Attach mesh to bone. That's pretty straightforward. <laughs> Has the name okay. Attach to bone equals skeleton. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Before we do that, I think they already put it in the using bones and skeletons. I believe it's already documented. So uh, attaching a mesh to a specific bone. Bones. 34 skeleton and then bones so we need to rotate through the bones find the names of them and make sure that we can attach a mesh to that particular bone um, okay we already know let me think this through we are grabbing the skeleton when we attach the animations to it. So the first thing is to attach that, then we can work on the orientation of moving the hands and everything. There's a couple different ways we can do this. Hmm. Okay, let's see. We're going to start with one and then see what we want to do, but uh, what's character? I think that's the... Character would be the avatar. And we have the skeleton bones this on that avatar attached to the bone. Okay. Um... We'll make it on a click, so you have to click the tool. It grabs it. Yeah, okay, just thinking through a couple things here. Um, let's, we, we have to trigger the event. So I think the best way to trigger the event, um, I'm gonna leave that right there. For, well, no, actually, I don't need that there. Um, I think we're okay. I think that's the piece that we want we're dropping the skeleton onto the framework so that we can grab it later um, so because of that we do have a way of calling that back up because results itself gets attached to meshes see we have results mess mess uh, message meshes and then we have that and Skeleton's parent, uh, okay. Yeah, I think I think we're gonna be okay. Um, when I did the part about loading the avatar and we attached certain, I know we're gonna use that one here shortly too. It's the reason I did it in front of a chair is I needed to figure out where exactly I wanted to be. And right here, we are grabbing the skeleton. Oh, see, that's the copy. And I apply it to copy animation, 
to this skeleton. Here it is. Okay, so if that's our skeleton, all we have to do is call up the avatar, get the skeleton, and then work from there. So I know that's going to be very helpful here in a minute. Um, let's let's build a function and kind of build off of that. Um, for now, this is not where it's going to sit long term, but because we're working with the basic avatars, uh, well, that's not going to help us any putting it there. I'm going to build the function in this process right here next to where we're working with. Yeah, that's not even a good idea. <laughs> okay, we're going to keep that where it's at. I like that idea. That automatically gives the physics imposter. We'll be able to make it where it only does that when we need it in a few minutes, but for now, that's fine. And then we're going to do the next thing, which is... I know, I'm just trying to think of where I'd rather put this code for the moment. Um, I'm going to start in common, and then we can... Um, it'll be a plug-in for the actual golf game, but since I haven't done all the structure, I don't want you to have to wait around while I do, you know, meaningless tasks like that. Um, update user access list, okay, that's fine. We're going to the bottom of this common file, and this one here is going to be grab grad club well we could say golf club in case I look at this later and go what is that okay so we're gonna call this grab golf club and it's going to be the mesh um, actually it's gonna be mold name I believe and this is copy that when we right click on something we select it um, when we left click on it, then I'm interfacing with it. And so basically all we're gonna have to do is left click it and then it's gonna automatically grab this function and then we're gonna tell it what to do to actually attach it to the hand, you know, whatever we need to do. So we're gonna, we're gonna do some stuff with that. Okay, um, thinking about it here. Um, Where am I going to go? Uh, let's start with, we do the input, and we are going to be doing on the mouse click, mouse out, mouse mold. Uh, let's get the mouse click event, which is just right. Mouse move, mouse up, mouse down, mouse right click, and eventually mouse click. Um, in here, picked name and we send this to uh, if setup mode equals zero which means we're not in setup mode then we send it to check mold event on click pick name uh, that's not what I was thinking is it find finding files There's a reason I put those other things down at the bottom of the page, because now every time we go to common, all I have to do is scroll to the bottom of the page afterwards to find the function I was working with. In here, um, mold event equals on click, mold name parts, and oh, that's the start the sit if we told it to do that. Mold name parts, mold name. If it's a seat that we clicked on, then it does this. If it's a, huh, that's not a named item. I'm missing something there. In the input, Plugins on click, that allows me to decide what it's doing there. Check clicked image, check JS function for pick name. Is it this one? This whole thing, I need to kind of bring it all into one function. I have too many little pieces of it. Eventually I'm gonna merge that into one and find out exactly what's causing it to do everything. 
But in this case, oh, here it is. This is the one I want. Check JS function. What it does is it looks to see if it's a mold. And if it is, then it figures out what mold it is. And then set function um, if there was a JavaScript attached to it. Um, no. I know what it is. I've done it for right click, but I never set that up for everything else. So let's see what we can do. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Um, set function. That isn't what I want. I need to make just one clear click function, tell it what to do, and be done with it. That would probably be the most ideal version of itself. Um, until then, check mold event is kind of the one I started doing. Find in files, find all. Let's go back to that file, which is right here. Mold event, um, this is checking to see if there's an animation to run on the event. So that's all fine for what it does. This one here, if it's an on click, then we're telling it what else it should do. Um, else if, what do I want to do? Um, wait a minute. I think we do have it in place. Watch this. I think I think we do have it. From that other piece that I was just at. Um, by doing this JavaScript function piece, and it's the pick name, it means we get the name on it. If I go in here, I know I keep bouncing back and forth between these two, but if I go to here, check JavaScript function, set the function there, and the parameter would be mold name. That might work. Okay, so we have three Babylon files. One of these is the flag. One of them is the, uh, I'm guessing the one that's up a little higher is the flag. That one's the base, which is the full-on scene. And this Babylon file should be the um, golf club. If that's the case, I should be able to add a JavaScript function to it. I know I can do this through the interface, but I just kind of want to... I'm checking some things here with this too. Um, there it is, JavaScript function. It is this line right there. And that would be WTW dot... Uh, what did I call it now? grab golf club or I should say pick up to I'm doing that for a reason because if I start searching for pick because you're picking something then I'll see this function in here too when I go across my code so that kind of makes sense um, let's go back to input no oh did I just totally blow that um, oh, database. Go here is the name of the thing, and then mold name is the parameter. And apply. We're going to see if that gets us to right here. <laughs> we'll just say yes if it does.
And loading up those different items. I'm just going to rotate so we have something. Yeah, that's funny. The ball's dropping to the ground. We're going to right click the golf club. I mean, not sorry, I didn't want to right click it. I said I'd click the golf club. And we don't know what it's doing. Okay, let's track that down. Because that one I actually want to make work. If it's not already working, we're going to find out why and we're going to fix it. Um, let's go back another stage to here. In here, let's first see if we have picked name. Well, let's do it right here. If we're getting to this point, then we're very close to where we are, and we can start figuring out why it... Well, we'll see where it's failing. Okay. Do, 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 do. And rotate him. If I click on the golf club... Okay, pick golf club is not defined, but we got input. Oh, what did I tell it to do, pick golf club? Um, <laughs> that was pick name, sorry. That should have been this, but the good news is it ran that line of code, which means we got this far, and I want to see if it's not image. We should be running check JavaScript function which means we should be getting to right here and we'll find out if we're gonna have a lot of cleanup on these little extra tags I keep putting in here but we'll say check mold function equals mold name Okay, because it might just be this right here isn't working, which I think I made a new function that does that. So we're going to find out and then test it at that point. Because once we fix it, it'll work for everything. Hello, how's it going? Yeah, just keep on building. Um, Creating some 3D internet stuff. Uh, gonna make it where we can have 3D shopping stores. Basically, it's like a WordPress where WordPress creates traditional websites. Nice. Hey, well, if you want to work on this project with me, I'll make us both rich. Um, have a patent on it, so that's all cool. But uh, what I'm doing is, you know how they have uh, WordPress? And WordPress, you can do traditional websites just by adding plugins. You can add extra functionality. Well, I took that same concept and built this product and this is going to allow us to drop, well, basically add plugins that do um, 3D functionality like games and stuff. So instead of writing a whole game from scratch, you can actually just take add one piece and then drop it into scenes and be able to use it on anybody's scene. So that kind of makes it real easy to do this. Uh, it's not Unity. It's actually using Babylon. Um, I have a degree of separation on purpose in the code. With a couple changes, we could actually adapt it to work with different gaming engines. But for now, it's on Babylon, and I like it. So far, it's been really good. Um, so, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll create multiple versions of different things later on and decide which one we want to go with. But for now, uh, Babylon seems to be friendly for people learning to code that haven't done it before. Um, so I kind of went with the best of both worlds on that. Because uh, in this code, you can actually do straight native Babylon, and you can do... Uh, different stuff on top using my interface and I even have some importers so you can bring in things like blender files Oh, web dev cool I was a webmaster for a large county for over 10 years so definitely you want to learn web stuff I'll teach you web stuff um, but basically I can take these different items such as the putter and just bring them from blender and export them as Babylon files and drop them right into here and then use them in the scenes. So we have a lot of cool extra functionality here. Um, a double RPD session? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I am. <laughs> Do it on purpose. Um, 
well, <laughs> it's kind of like having a back door into my servers, and then from there I can go to any server in my realm. So it's just different ways of doing things. But yeah, I do that. <laughs> uh, it also allows me to, from whatever machine I'm working from, I can always just jump right in and basically connect up to the servers and do the code that I'm working on without having to worry about what machine I'm doing it from. So, so I do a lot of stuff like that. I do have all my local dev environments all set up too. Yeah, we, we can get you some things on that resume for sure. Yeah. I got a doctorate in education and I got a lot world of experience in web and I've been working on this project. Uh, I had a full-time job and I've been working on this project about eight years now, but I have to tell you, I've only been doing this full time for about two years, so it's really developed a lot since then. Also, I dropped the code out at the end of September open source, so you can actually get the code that I'm working with for this whole on interface, and you can actually write your own plugins and do all kinds of cool stuff with it. Uh, right now, I'm working on creating the basics of a miniature golf game just so that we can have a game out there. We can create some different levels and have some fun with that. Uh, then we can put some stores around it for 3D shopping, and we can we can build a whole bunch of stuff with it. But for now, just getting the physics engine in place and uh, enabling some of the physics functionality, and like I said, using a golf game to learn how to do it and everything. So. Cool. Uh, if you want to catch me afterwards, we'll do some stuff. I'll check out some different things and stuff, but I'm going to stay on pace with where I'm going on this. Uh, make sure you follow me so that, uh, oh, thank you for following me. I just saw that you did that. I do appreciate that because then you'll know when I'm online. I broadcast about daily, so I'm, I'm on here most days, and I've been working on this project. Uh, you'll see me stream quite a bit of stuff. Um, I do a couple hours a day and, you know, then do a lot of coding on the side of that too, but... Uh, but yeah, that's the gist of it. Uh, like I said, it's kind of like having WordPress, but for 3D games. So let's say you're really great at creating just car, you know creating cars. Well, then you could build the best cars. Everybody'd want to use your plugin, and you can even do it freemium. Where let's say you drive the Jeep for free, but if you want the Ferrari or if you want passengers to get in the passenger seat or something, then you have to unlock it and you have to pay a fee to unlock it on your server. So we could do some cool stuff like that. Uh, you can also get paid for creating 3D buildings and stuff and 3D shopping stores for businesses. Um, basically, I'm opening up a whole way for programmers to make money. And like I said, I put it out there open source, so that makes it real easy for you to work with. But like the people that follow me, one of the benefits of following me is that if you need something, I'll put my focus on you first before other people. I want to make sure that the people that follow me kind of get the, the most attention and when they need something. So, so that's what I do. Um, working on it though. Um, cool. Uh, you can also message me through um, through uh, Discord. Uh, so the link down below for Discord. You can click that and you can uh, leave me a message on there. Uh, no worries. Um, just another way of getting a hold of me and uh, doing stuff on there. Okay, and let's see, let's keep going here. I've clicked that and notice it does check the function and everything, so it looks like we we don't have the last piece of that set up. Um, ow, hang on a second. And drag that over here. Do, 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 do. Um, Okay, just getting the thing. <laughs> Break my own machine. <laughs> See how much my machine can do at once, right? Okay, and let's see, what else do we have here? So we're getting that close. We're able to detect what thing was clicked. Uh, there's a function, and check to see if the function's there. Let's see if the function name comes up. Um, it should be this. We're gonna find out if, if that has a value, but it's good to know we're getting this far. So we're gonna take 
this and see if that pops up. Just want to know if it's getting that far. We're almost there. I'm <laughs> just tracking through the code. Do, 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 do. Our physics engine's working. We're able to drop the golf ball to the ground, loading up my avatar, and if I click that, oh, the function comes up blank. Okay, so we're not grabbing the function through there. Um, that means it did not load with the other pieces. We're gonna find out why, because that's something we need. We need the function to actually make it this far so that we know if I grab a golf club, then basically it's supposed to click off a certain function telling me to pick it up and do whatever from there on out. For now, I'm gonna cheat just because I can. We're gonna put a dummy function in here just so that we can continue on the code for picking up the club. So I'm going to take that and it's going to be pick up golf club. We'll worry about the fill in the gaps of why it didn't read that from the database and execute it out of here. But for now, when I click on it, it's going to automatically do that. And then we should get to our code where we're actually working with the club. And yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Do, 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 do. Okay, click here and yes. Okay, so we got to that club, core, uh, that info there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start by. Do, 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 do. Uh, whoops, where'd it go? pick up the golf club. We're going to tell it what to do at this point. Um, avatar, let's see. Avatar equals and um, let me double check how I get uh, load avatar. I know it's on this page about a million times. Mm, making sure I'm grabbing the it's Avatar name equals this right there. So if I do avatar name equals that and avatar equals get mesh by ID. And that will be avatar name. Uh, once we have that, if Avatar is not null. Yeah, I missed a parenthesis. Okay, and then once we have that far, the next piece is that we need to find out what bone is his right hand. So we're gonna, well, there's another piece here. We're gonna do bar mold equals get mesh by ID and we're going to make sure that that exists also mold is not null okay so we know that we have both those parts then we're going to go just like I saw in here right up here we actually have Avatar skeleton is this one. Okay, so um, for well, let me let me just get that in there for a second. Okay, under the skeleton we have the different bones bones collection under skeleton, I believe. So let's find out at this point if if I got the skeleton and everything worked to that point. Let's see. Bones equal. I think I'm there. Let's try this. Bone dot length. Is it bone dot length or is it bones? 
find out. I think it's bones. Bones, okay, skeleton, bones, and then we should have a length after that. Tracking our way through the code, just one thing after another here. Okay. And let's see if we get a bones length, just so we know we're cycling through the bones at that point in time. We're getting there. We're walking our way through the code. <laughs> and let's rotate. Okay. And when I click on this, I get avatar is not defined no oh. how about avatar spell it right typos are my worst enemy Okay, so that tells it. Um, let's click on that. Now that the avatar is loaded, uh, check GS functions blank. Okay, so it picked the shaft. I can grab the grip separately. Okay. Um, Check JS function equals blank, uh, which means let's find out if let's see if we got that far. Just need to know where we got to so we can fix the other parts after it. Um, We know we can pick the different parts on that because we do have full control over that. So let's spin around here, wait till his person loads. And when I click on that, uh, no, it did not get that far. Avatar should equal avatar name, which is my instance and my avatar. Well, let's check some more values. Okay. Sometimes you could be one letter off. Uh, okay, no, that's all correct. Avatar name equals that then avatar is null equals avatar equals null and then we'll do the same thing with copy the mold if mold is null or mold is null find that out also Copy that and make sure that we have the mold name coming in here. That would explain a lot if we didn't have that piece. Okay, let's find out what values we do have. It's all part of the game. Do, 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 do. There we go. Rotate it. And you know what? I'm going to set the opening scene to this for now. Set start position here. I don't want to have to keep on doing that every time. Okay, now if I click on this, mold is, well, mold is false. Oh, 
I do know why. The grip, I clicked on it. It knew the name, but it technically is no, because it's not, well, it is in the set. It's parented, is, it's pickable, it's parented. So this is where we get the tricks here. Oh, that's the skeleton. Um, not there. When I do this and I set up, let's make sure I'm in the right function here. I believe that's still the Babylon mold file. Okay. When I do this and it goes through and checks all the meshes, we give it names. And we set pickable equals true. That's why we can click them. The other thing I can check is this. These are some of my development tools I created. Uh, gives you a good chance to find out. You can list the loaded objects. And in this case, it is a building mold. So we should have three Babylon files. Okay, but we do not get Wait, current meshes. List current meshes. This is where. Name of no. Name should have been fine. Oh, but it's of no. Something's not showing. Uh, action zones, connecting grid, my avatar, sky, loaded meshes. Okay, it actually has an error there. List meshes. Okay, so there's something wrong in the way we're telling it the name. We have the name right here for each mesh that it brings up. We should also set the ID because we have name and ID. Get mold by ID, hint. Okay, now that we have the name set there, let's see if that works. I believe that that might be the issue. It might be the fact that we didn't have the ID set and we're trying to get mold by ID, so it's going, no, no, you don't have that. And there's my avatar. When I click on this, bone 67. Okay, fix another issue. <laughs> Yay, moving right along. And now that it clicked that, it knows there's 67 bones. And if I say, um, Go back to my function here. Okay, so for i equals zero, i less than after our bones length, i plus plus, we're going to cycle through those bones if um, to our bones. I is not null. No, I always do that check. And then if bones I dot name. equals, uh, let's do it to lower, to lowercase equals right hand, then let's see if we found that, put the word here, if we see the word here it means we found the hand. And 
Let's wait till it loads. Okay, click that. Uh, 167, okay. It did not tell us here, so we don't need all that other stuff anymore. Um, bones, we have 67 of them. Uh, else, it might be that right hand is part of the name now. It's not the full name. Um, I'm going to do it this way. Index of right hand greater than negative 1. Then it's part of the name, so we should be able to catch that. Let me try that because I think, I think it's going to be the full name of the bones, which means we've appended the name of our avatar so that he has a unique name for every mesh that's part of him. Okay. Oops, I don't need to do that. We want to do not that one. Focus stuff. There we go. Okay, if I click this here, there we go. It is 21 times. Oh. Let's see what it is because I know what's I know what's happening. What we have is right hand, middle finger, right hand, right hand, thumb, right hand. We have all these other pieces in here, and we need to determine the one that is only only right hand. Um, we could do. Okay, we could do the last nine characters of the name. Skeleton Bones name to lower. Um, okay, let's see if we can come up with a statement that's going to get the right hand um, without everything else, too. That's where the trick comes in. To lowercase dot. I know it's substring, I just want to... Substring from length minus, no plus, minus 7. How do I get last characters of a string? Okay, here it is. Uh, you'll want ID string, string length minus five. Five, okay, that's what I want. I knew it was going to be something simple like that, and th oh, I've already marked them. Thank you on that one. Okay. So it is this, and That'll be nine characters equal right hand, then here. And we should only get that one time now, because that is the proper use of right hand. Maybe later we'll make it where they can be right or left handed, and we'll adapt for that. But that's not going to be in our first iteration of this program, obviously. OK, when I click on that. Uh, ID is not defined. What did I miss? Oh, I copied ID. <laughs> okay, let's shorten this whole thing up here. Um, bar bone equals that. And now I can say bone name that and bone ID, bone length, which would be the bone name, by the way. I could say bone name. Hmm. 
Now I need the bone also. Bone equals that bone dot name length here. Okay, that should do it. And let's oops. Load that back up and see if we can get another step closer here. focus and here comes our avatar there he is and when I click this here we found it and it's just one time we got it okay so now that we have that item now we can do what it said here which is we're gonna take combine these different items we're gonna say mesh mold name mesh mold there it is mold character is avatar skeleton bones 34 which would be bone this right here and that should attach the item to the guy let's find out how well we did that doesn't work. We got some studying to do. <laughs> okay. Do, 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 do. So if I click, oops, turn off focus. Click on the handle, and it says here, but oh, wait a minute. Handle's gone. Let's do something larger. Um, okay, it's doing something. Not sure what it did, but it did something. Uh, let's go to a self camera. Well, if I attached it to the hand, we should be seeing it in the hand. And a couple of those items were much longer than his hand, so we should see him in there. Why? Didn't end up somewhere else in the scene, did it? No, I don't see it anywhere. There's a zero, zero, zero. No. Well, it didn't give me an error, but it also didn't give me the desired results. Okay, let's find a sample and see what we missed here. Um, we have a sphere. No problem. We have an object in our scene, too. Um, Was it updatable needed? I don't think that mattered. Okay, so... I don't see anything different than what I did. Skeleton equals skeleton zero. Skeletons zero. We already have that. We were able to find the actual bone. Well, let's do what they did. Uh, when I grabbed that item just to do it, um, mold dot scaling dot
we're gonna we're gonna make it extremely big when you pick it up and just see if there's anything that pops up on my screen <laughs> that's one way to check not sure <coughs> not sure what happened there it should have attached it to the bone because it seemed to have found the bone and we don't have anything near the guy there's nothing there but if I resized it to be ten times the size we should see it in the scene someplace yep. ten times its size is pretty good size that just disappeared now Okay, I'm at a loss. It's not anywhere near there. That would be zero 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 on this scene. That's the only reason I checked there. Um, no, nope, there's nothing there at zero zero zero. Huh. I'm confused. We've got something going on here. Okay, so, yeah, big deal. Um, I don't see what I'm doing wrong. Don't know why it disappeared, though. Is it a property of the item that I'm trying to work with? That's a possibility. Uh, we'll keep it large just because if it ever works, then I'll know it. Go back to basic molds here. We're doing all this stuff. Um, is it? That's Why is that blank? So whatever reason, I always make that blank. Uh, mesh names. fine name the mesh names here okay so we get them all in place there um, it's all the parenting screwing up everything it's pickable it's no there's no problem with that well okay let's go back to the drawing board here let me try instead of picking up a complex object Let's put the ball back in the scene and click on the ball and see if we can't get it to pick up. Actually, we already have a ball in the scene. I'm kind of curious then. If we go into the scene. Okay, let's reload it. Don't know where the ball went. We're going to Oh, cuz I picked up the I picked up the whole thing. <laughs> the ball's underneath it. Okay, so if I 
pick up the ball because the ball is just a plain sphere. Um, might be something with the settings of the blender object that we brought in so that the club is a blender object where the ball is just created right here in Babylon. So if I click on the ball, it... I don't know where it went. It's not attached to his hand unless it went invisible. Let's find out if it's in the scene. Uh, list objects, current meshes, Babylon file, sphere. Here it is. Parent, right hand. Visible true. Well, that's awfully interesting. That is awfully interesting. The sphere is in the scene. It says, oh, what just went around? There's something bouncing around my scene up here. I think it's because we added the physics imposter. Let's re take the physics imposter off of that item for a minute. I think it's trying to move around after we put it there. Let's see if I'm right. Um, it's going to drop through the ground, so don't even worry about that piece. What I want to know is now. Uh, see, it went right through the ground. Knew that. But if I click on this now. And click on this now. Nope, there's nothing in his right hand. There. Put that in his right hand. Nope. Can't see it. It's not there. <laughs> it's not here in the scene. Um, well, that would be something. It is floating in the middle of the air. A mile away from everything. That is really interesting because that means that the golf club and everything is probably up here someplace. Yep, I'm seeing a golf club right there in the hole, which is zero. Okay. Um, oh. I know what it is. Okay, I don't think it has to do with the physics imposter, but when I pick up something, since it parented it to the other item, I think what happened is we need to set position back to zero on all of these because it needs to be in relation to the hand, which is the new parent. It didn't... It didn't extrapolate the difference between where it was before to where it is now. Uh, so, if I take this and refresh now, there we go. Figured it out, I think. And let's see, we have a bouncing ball on there. The, the physics is working again because we have it back on there. Now watch this, if I pick up this item, and let's see if I pick up that item and I pick up that item. Where are they? Okay, hang on. Do, 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 do. Up in the sky someplace here. Yeah, that was close. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Did I see it back here? I just clicked on. Well, I click on something big enough, eventually you're going to see it someplace, right? Uh, where'd it go? It's moving. There it goes. Okay, what's happening is a combination of things. First one is we do not want, I'm, I'm gonna set it where we can set the physics on certain objects and not on others. 
And the first thing is we don't want the physics imposter on because it tries to calculate something when we move it. The second part is that since we're parenting it on a new object, we have to set the mesh back to 000, zero so that it ends up in the hand of the person we're talking about. So to do that, we're going to click on this and no, it's still not there. there. Okay, we're going to take this big object because it seems to be a lot easier to notice when it's someplace else. There it is. So why is it up there? Because the parenting on it has to be the parenting values because we're setting it to something new. And the movement is actually his movement. Oh, it did not scale the movement. It did not scale the movement when we attached it to his hand. And because the avatar is scaled to like a 700th of a position, that's what it's doing. Now notice the movement here is subtle, which means it is this movement right here that he's doing in his hand. Okay, we can test that theory. We'll decide if we want the physics on or off afterwards. But what I want to do is test that theory by saying position is zero. Um, instead of that, I want to say mold mold dot parent equals bone. Don't know if that's going to do it or not because the bone I don't believe is a mesh. We may have a scaling issue with the movement. And I think there's an easy way to find out right now. That's fine. Here he is. And um, whatever reason that still thinks that it is in the air. I have a feeling it's going to be really high up above us. Do, 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 do. It's still up that high. Huh. How? Okay. Well, you know what? I'm going to take a, about a five minute break and then I'm going to come back and um, we'll jump right back in because I see what it's doing. Got to figure out a way to beat it. So um, be right back.
Hello, I'm back. Sorry I had to get a phone call while I was gone. Took a little longer than I expected, but I'm back. How you doing, Eva? <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Good deal. Okay, so what we're working on. This is kind of interesting. The bones are moving in the right order and everything else, but the skeleton is actually the original scale. I wonder if I can scale the skeleton. I never tried that. I scaled the... You know, I think I'm on the right track here. When I load up the avatar, um, I had to scale... Let's see, look here. Um, I use this right that's the basic avatar itself and then I do an avatar scale and then I make the mesh all a sub part of that well because all the bones move in the same angles that was never an issue but I think what we need to do is just like I have this it's scaling this I think the skeleton itself, or do I need to parent it to that? Huh, that's an idea too. Maybe it's not parented. Ooh, that would be a good fix. Uh, okay, visible is all of fun, all those. Let me see. When I check the meshes, I am telling it to parent, where is it? This is where I'm parenting to. I know I am. Um, where am I actually doing that? Well, let's look up the word parent and see what we come up with. Um, there's, I'm highlighting one here. Okay. So that's the parent. Parent's the avatar. Okay, those are all fine. It's this stuff here. When I bring in the meshes, um, it's all fine. Oh, here's the avatar parent for the meshes. What about the skeleton skeleton I think I need to do the same thing oh no I do avatar parent wait a minute avatar parent oh avatar parent that's right avatar parent is scale so I'm setting it right here on the skeletons it should have it should have scaled every one of them. Let me find out this way. If we take parent is the bone, let's backtrack and see how many parents we have in place here. <laughs> I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Because I scaled the avatar down, when I try to pick up something in his hand, it's going to the original size. It is not scaled down. So something isn't, isn't parented. Maybe the bones aren't parented to the skeleton. It's possible. But we're going to find out um, where that breaks. Uh, while... Uh, let's see. Bar. Parent mold equals bone. Well, parent mold is not equal null. We're going to find out right now. Um, we're going to tell it to 
WTW dot log parent equals and then we'll say parent mold dot name and then here we're gonna say parent mold equals mold dot parent that changes it to the new parent and we should get all the parents of the bones all the way back till there is none let's see what that does if it does what I think it's gonna we're gonna have a break in the parenting or something where it didn't scale I'm thinking the bones didn't scale when it parented to the to the skeleton so we're gonna find out exactly where the break is in that chain uh, turn off focus here it is here he is and if I click on this parent his right hand and then it stops the right hand is not a child of oh, which means none of that stuff scaled that's why the angles all come up right that's why the animations all work right but because it's not scaled I can't reach into his hand because it thinks his hand is way up there because it's an invisible skeleton and it's the mold is copying the angles okay so to fix that what I want to do is when I load the basic avatar and we're setting the skeletons parent there but that's the skeleton and then for each this is where we gotta we gotta go through the skeleton bones um, We're going to do something like this. If skeletons I, because there can be more than one skeleton, dot bones length, if this is not null, means there are bones then we're gonna do cycle through them and we're gonna set the parent and see if that doesn't fix it uh, we can't use I because we're within an index piece we're gonna just go to the next best letter which is J and now if result skeleton bones J is not null then and we're gonna see if this whacks out the whole thing or if all the animations still work so we're gonna be, do some tests on this piece but I'm gonna say bones dot parent Ooh, this could knock every bone position out of place equals equals skeleton uh, which is this okay <laughs> let's see how bad that does I think it's gonna knock all the animations out of place let's see if he loads no P wasn't gonna do that What if we change the scale? Since they're not scaled, huh? Since they're not, Bones' parent isn't set. You know, let me look that up.
Um, Oh, each bone parents to another bone. Why? Nah, it doesn't work like that. Let's do something different and just see what it does. But I, I think it's I'm I'm on the right path here. The bone scale. Um, Let me see if I get it closer to the ground if I just change the scale on Y to 0 0.07. It's probably going to give me an error. That's probably not even a... Oh, wait a minute. Scaling X, scaling Y. Those are my values, not theirs. I don't know if that's reading in the object or not. We're going to find out. Um... There's one way to find it. If we go in here, do 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 do. Ah, now getting into this section here. Okay, materials, max. On scale. Get scale. Ooh. Huh, I think we're onto something here. Nah, that's not going to help me there. Bones, cloning bones, cloning complex models, uh, do, 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 mesh a skeleton, that's all fine. Clone everything, I got that. Um, Problem is our bones are out of scale from the actual skeleton, uh, and they're hidden, so it's not.
Hmm. Let me find out. Here's a good way to test that. Didn't like that, so we can't do that. But what we can do is, whoops. I like put in the first column, then I don't lose it when I go to erase these items afterwards. Um, bones get scale. Let's find out if we're what we're getting there. Don't even know if that's going to work. It may even give us an error trying to pull it, but we're going to find out. That's how we learn, right? Okay. And we have all the scale, which is 1 and 1.9. See, there's, there's the problem. The scale is not correct. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. That's pretty um, interesting, too. Hmm. Interesting conversation. Set scale on imported bones. Huh. Oops. Well, when you're learning, you're learning, right? I'm getting new things here. I'm learning. Um, Use the bones of scaling, uh, set scale, okay, set scale. Bones scale, scale, X, Y, Z. That would be what I'm looking for. Let's try that and see if we don't get this in place. Um, that's what we need. Um, I may have just found well, this is basic avatars. This is where we would need to do it. Um, and where X1 or XYZ would be the scaling of Scaling X, scaling Y, and scaling Z, which gets set from whatever we import. Copy that. Okay, I think I'm, I've got the right name here, even. Let me double check that again. No. Scaling it. Scaling Y. Scaling Z. Okay. Gonna mark that out. Let's check that. That might have been the fix, and that could fix so many other things that we run into. Uh, okay, what did I get it? Uh, 292. Where did I do something wrong here? 292, which would be. Yeah, 
Results go to nine bones J O dot scale. There we go. Had an extra word in there. Let's try that. Okay, let's see. Didn't like that. Scaling XZ is not defined. Oh, jeez. Ugh. There we go. Missed a backspace. It's going to test my patience on every bit of this, every step of the way, isn't it? Let's see. Focus off. I don't want the focus on. And there he is. And now when I put something in his hand, now. It still could be thing. Watch this. Here's where it is. Avatar camera and look up. There it is, floating up in the sky. Arr, it's still bigger. It's not shrinking it to the proper size. But there's more than one bone scaling thing that's going on here. Let me see what it becomes, because that will tell us a lot right here. What do we set it for? <laughs> no, it all went back to one. It did not set the scale. Oh, wait a minute. It set the scale there on that bone not all of the rest of them after that they're all set to one 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 okay we are making ground um, this needs to happen when I load up the animations here uh, skeleton bones oh let me do that whole thing again Because this happens and I load up the skeletons. Skeleton bones. I know it's just the one skeleton because that's what we're actually working with. And bones animations. I think since I'm already going through all the different bones, we just have to do that scaling line. For the moment, I'm going to hard code it and we're going to see if it works. Because if that's the case, then we may be a lot closer to getting this right. Let's see what happens if I do this. And it's avatar, bone, skeleton all the way to bones through there and that will be a C at that point and scale is going to be 0 0.04 for now we'll have to read in the scale in a minute but I want to see if we change these does it change all of the animations um, Let's see. Just to be safe, make sure I'm getting everything that I expect, we're going to say 0 0.04 on these also. Now, every one of the bones of the skeletons, we should get that value because we're forcing it on all the skeletons that come through. Um, 0.9. See, it didn't do it. Well, it could. It, it may have done it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, let's pick up this. Nope. See, it's still in the sky. Huh, but see, there's still something wrong in the scaling. Why did the scaling go to this? 
when I directly told it to go to 0 0.4, 0 0.04, like this one did. Okay, we have the bone here. I just want to see if we're even hitting the bones we expect, otherwise that definitely wouldn't uh, get us to where we need to be anyway. I don't know, name. There we go. Let's see what happens. Um, got something going on here. It's not scaling them, per se. See, left knee to right, right knee. Every one of these should be down to that scaling. Wait a minute. The only bone I need to set the scale on would be the hip. Let me see which one that is. Now we'll start with, before the bone name, we'll get the item it is. Because they're all parented to each other, the bones should be. If that's the case, then we should be able to set the hip bone, and everything after it should automatically go to scale. Because they are all one scale beyond that after you get past the initial one. Um, Let's see what's happening here. Okay, so hips, we scale that, and then everything else should be to scale afterwards. But for some reason, we're picking up items and they're ending up in the sky anyway. And there they all are. Everything we tell it to pick up. And they're intact, and they're attached to this. <laughs> it's attached to the hand of this 100 degree version of itself. We aren't parenting 
to the scale down there when we load the different animations, the additional animations. But see, this one is the idle, which is the kicker that starts off the whole thing. Um, see, this is our guy. That's the movement we're getting. Notice this guy is huge, and we scale him after we bring him in. I can prove that. We're going to do something different here just to see what happens. I'm going to come into here and our scaling is going to remain one to one to one for the moment. We're going to see a big man standing there and then we're going to click some and see if it ends up in his hand. I'm just curious. Because <laughs> there's something not scaling with it, and I'm going to figure this out. It's one of those days, and the first thing I'm going to do is... Do, 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 do. There's his feet. <laughs> okay. Um, oops. Let me click on this. And I have a feeling it's also off-centered by zero. But we're going to find that out right now. Turn that off. Look. See, it's not in his hand. It's in front of his hand, or is it? Yeah. It's the distance away from zero. So it didn't transform the item to zero, zero, zero. But notice it's moving with him, and that's more to scale of where it's sitting. The point zero is actually right there on the hole, and that would be point zero of the hand. It looks like they're in unison with each other. Okay, well, I've identified the problem now. Learning how to fix it is a whole other story. First of all, that's already um, not picking up the matrix of the movement. That's hovering over zero, 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 which means that the current skeleton is not parented correctly because it would be moving with the place, with the hand. Hmm, that's an interesting one. That's a real interesting one. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're taking some baby steps. Um, this would be the invisible visible skeleton and it attached to the hand like it's supposed to. It does not know. See, watch. Even if I... I'm going to take and connect to the avatar and I'm going to back up. And this will be a mile away by the time I'm done here. Okay. So we backed up. I click the avatar and notice it's still going to be in the same place. I don't think it backed up with it. Which means it didn't parent. See, it didn't. I'm getting farther away. I think I am. There's no easy way to do this. Okay, it's staying directly over that flag. It did not move. So it is staying in proportion to zero, zero, zero of the scene. If I click here and I move backwards again, I know we're moving big steps, but little distance. <laughs> so I'm going to back up a little farther. Avatar camera off. And... See, it's not moving. It's still at the original location, which is over there. Huh, that tells me it's the skeleton itself is not anchored to the avatar. That's the first piece we have to fix, which is going to fix our scale and make sure that everything moves with it. Uh, so here we go. Let's find out why the skeleton isn't connected to... Do, do, do. We're going to leave that disconnected there for a moment. We have 
this. And what we're doing is we are parenting the meshes to there if they're not already parented to something. And then we go through and we check these. And if the skeleton's parent isn't set, we set it to there. Um, then if if that dot parent equals null then that dot parent equals That would be the last bone. And we're going to set it to this for the moment and just see what that does. Go in here. It should be right on the hand, if not in the hand, by the time we're done with checking this. Still going to be full size. Very big. There he is. And when I click this, in the avatar okay we're gonna go up here and see it's still in front of them now nah, so we're not getting there don't know why that's being zero based oh I think I know it's wrong. I think I do. It's possible. This is the possibility. The parent of the skeleton needs to be to here, and I want to find out if it's actually doing that. Um, parent parent skeleton. We're going to make that in yellow just so it stands out among all of our other things. And the parent of the meshes, um, the parent shouldn't be null. Uh, let me remark that off for a minute. If the, I want to make sure that we're parenting the right piece because the parent of the bones are the armature. The parent of the mesh should be the armature. Then the armature gets parented back. If I intercepted that and changed it, that may be why we're walking around without the bones. So let's load up the, ava or the avatar here. Do we have an avatar loaded? No, we don't have an avatar loaded. Okay, that was interesting. I don't have... <laughs> we lost everything. Okay, where is everything? Whoa, we have some things. Oh, going the wrong way, sorry. There's that. But I do not see. OK, if there was a giant around here, I'd have to see him. Also, avatar camera on. This is where he would be. Wait a minute, that's walking backwards. That's forward. Self camera. Let's go follow camera. No, nope, we're not seeing him. He's not visible. <laughs> OK. Let's see if that parenting fixes that piece. Oh, I didn't look to see if we had that yellow marker anywhere in here. Um, no. There it is. Oh, it did parent the skeleton. That's good to know. I did it before doing all these. Which would mean... 
Hmm. Okay. I'm learning. I'm learning. Okay, we have a skeleton. You can walk backwards and forward. If I click this, and just so we know, the appearance of the skeleton, and it should put that in the right hand. It's attached to it, but it's not in the right place. Let's see, turn the avatar off, move forward a little bit, look up. Oop. And that's not in his hand, it's in front of his hand. Hum, num, num, num. Okay, there's obviously a parenting issue here. It's connecting it to it, but it's not to scale or position based on what we... Wait a minute, when I connect it, I set them to zero. Let me transform them. Let's, let's not transform them. And double check that. I was setting these here. I don't want to set the oh the mold parent bone. Okay, we're gonna do the actual mold attached to bone, the their function, and then I'm going to set this. I know I could have done one big long statement not to do any of that. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't thinking I was gonna get rid of all of it at the time. Okay, let's try that. Make sure that I'm not interfering with my own thing, because if I set it to zero, 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 well, it'd be down on the ground. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so we have giant here. This is off. There he is. Click that. Do that. And turn around and also go up. Yes, it hit the hand. Okay, we're making progress. That hit the hand in full scale, and it's all there. We're looking at it from underneath, that's why we don't see the full details of it. That's fine, if I turn it this direction, notice there it is, the whole, oops, I clicked it. What did I click? <laughs> Okay, there we go. So we do have it connected to the hand. We have hope here. Um, if that's the case, then that puts it in the hand. And now let's go back to the basic avatars. And let's shrink him and see if the item ends up in his hand or in the sky because <laughs> then we're dealing with a different issue uh, click that now I should come up scaled and then we just have a scaling issue on the thing which I know I say just be two days worth of work to fix that if I don't understand it right okay he's that size if I click on this it's not in his hand, and neither is that. And if I back up far enough and look up, there it is. That's the item we're looking at. Okay, it's still coming up out of scale. It's basically up there. If I take the avatar and we look up I don't know if I can see it because it's so directly above me and I back up I'm just curious if it's moving with me or not let's run backwards okay and I don't see it there Oh, it's moving with me. It's directly above me. Doesn't get more above that. I'm looking up my own nose. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, well, that was good to know. Um, we have this thing hovering above us. It is working with us position-wise, but it has not scaled properly. So I'm going to have to work on that. We're, I'm going to do some more reading, see if I can't find another little hint of why it's doing that. And then I'll come back and we'll take it from there. So I uh, want to thank everybody for watching today. And thank you to our new follower two hours ago. I appreciate that. Laser 696969, and it's all good. Uh, have a great day, and I'll be back again. You know me. I'll be back. Okay.